When building an application, it may be necessary to take into consideration other factors than the username and password when authenticating a user. For example, if we look at our login.jsp page, you'll notice that in addition to the username and password field, we also accept this automobile make field. We're going to add this make field into a custom authentication object. And that authentication object is then going to be used by our authentication provider in order to determine whether or not we should authenticate a user. In this instance, we're going to check that a vehicle for a user is of a particular make. And if it's not, we're going to deny access to the application. It's going to provide us with a good demonstration of how to create a custom authentication object that can contain some additional credentials that we can consider when authenticating our users. To get started, the first thing we'll do is create a new class within our security package. So I'm going to use the new dialog to create a new class, custom authentication token. We're also going to have this class extend the username and password authentication token. Because we are considering username and password as credentials, we're just going to extend that existing type, but we're going to add an additional field, which is the make field, and it's going to be of type string. And then we're going to add a get method for the make field. Now with that in place, we're next going to create a new constructor for this custom authentication token. This constructor will be used when we are creating the authentication token when the user logs in. The first thing that we want to add to this constructor is the principal. We're going to make the credentials a string and then make should also be a string. Now there is another constructor that we'll add to this class, which is going to be used once we have authenticated the user and we now want to return an authentication object within the authentication provider. For this constructor, we're going to open the generate constructor dialog, and then we're going to actually use the username and password authentication token, and we're going to use the variation that accepts the collection of granted authorities. So just click OK, and you can also just type this out. But if you're familiar with Eclipse, it's a lot easier to use the generate constructor dialog. And you can simply right click and then go to source and then generate constructor using fields. And that will open that dialog for you. Now that we have our constructor template put in place, we're going to modify this so it accepts an auto user. For the credentials, once again, we're going to use a string. We're going to import the auto user type. So there we have our second constructor. And this class, our custom authentication token, is going to serve as our new authentication object when the user is logging into the system. We'll go ahead and we will save this class. Next, we're going to return to our package explorer and we're going to create another class. And we're going to call this class the custom authentication filter. And this class needs to extend the username and password authentication filter. Once we have that in place, we'll click finish. And now we can begin to work on our new class. This is a filter and it will be entered into the filter proxy chain, just like our username and password authentication filter is currently. We'll see that configuration in a little bit. But basically what this filter is going to do, it's going to pull the information out of the request that gets submitted so that we can build our authentication object. To do this, we're going to right click within the editor and we're going to go to source and then we're going to click on override and implement methods. First deselect all of the methods and then we want to override the attempt authentication method. This method gets very close to the servlet API because we're dealing with a request and a response. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull some information from the request. And we can do that using some methods within the super class, username, password, authentication filter. So they have a method that allows us to obtain 
the username for our request, and we can also obtain the password very easily. Next, we're going to obtain our make parameter, which is being passed. And to do this, we're simply going to access the parameter within the request as you would almost any other parameter within a servlet. So we'll simply specify make as the parameter we'd like to pull back, and we're going to assign that to our string make. At this point, we're going to build our authentication object. So we're going to create a new custom authentication token, and I'm just going to name this token. Then we're going to use the constructor, which will allow us to pass in the username, the password, and the make. So this is that first constructor we created over in the custom authentication token class. Next, we're going to use another method within the super class, which is set details. This simply puts some information into our authentication object about the actual request itself. So I'm going to set the details, and we're going to pass in our token. And then at this point, we're going to get the authentication manager. Then we're going to invoke the authenticate method. So this is actually going to call the authentication provider that has been set up within our authentication manager. And we're going to pass in our token. Now we have configured a authentication filter, which can be registered within the filter proxy chain, and it's going to build that authentication object that we have just created. At this point, we have created our custom authentication object, and we've also created our filter that will be able to incorporate that object into the Spring security process. We'll pick up in our next lesson where we left off.